saved. They need to see some joy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, contain myself. They need to see some joy. They need to see some peace. They need to see some love. They need to see somebody that's running around with a sound mind. Why would I want to be saved and just come amongst people that always looks like they're drinking limeade? No joy, no peace, no love. Why would I want to associate myself with people like that? That's why the scripture says, you shall know them, not by how much they speak in tongues. Oh, Jesus, I feel crazy this morning, Green. I'm telling you, it's by their love. One to one. Show me a powerful church. Show me the love in the church. Oh, Jesus. Show me an anointed church. Show me how much love is amongst the people of God. Show me a dead church. Show me folk that's hating on each other. Folk that refuse to love one another. Folks that refuse to esteem one another. Hire them themselves. Look at somebody say, I'm going to lift you up this morning. Oh, I'm lifting you up. I'm going to lift you up. See, some of y'all didn't know. That's because you're still stuck on yourself. I said, look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to esteem you higher. Oh, Jesus, I feel like preaching this morning. I'm going to going to esteem you higher than myself. I don't care what situation you're in. I'm going to esteem you higher than myself. You might be strung out on crap. I'm still going to esteem you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to esteem you higher than myself. A church that is powerful is a church that has love in it. Where love is leading on. Y'all see we just talking. Uzzah touched the ark and God killed him. Many of us in here have been touching on stuff that we don't have no business touching. Come on somebody. Somebody just be real. We've been touching things that we don't have the authority to touch. That's why you have to be careful. You have to be careful and be help somebody. You got to be careful when pastor says something and then you go back and start talking about what he said. Because he's anointed to touch it, but you're not. He's going to get quiet here. You're not anointed to touch what Mama T touches. Oh, it's just Mama T. No, it ain't. She's anointed and appointed to do what she does. If you want to go touching on stuff, and God will kill you. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel in here, Pastor. God will kill you. You better hear what I'm saying. All you folks that want to talk about you the same, you're not the same. All right. All right. All right. I get a word from God too, not the word that He gets. Because you ain't the pastor. You ain't the first. Oh, God, I gotta just go this way, Pastor. Watch what you say. I feel it, the Holy Ghost is going. You better watch what you're saying. You better watch how you sit around the kitchen table. You better watch it. You have not been appointed to touch the thing. Then you better let them deal with it. It's better for you to let it fall on the ground. Than for you to reach out your hand and touch something that you have no business touching. Jesus. Because of God's realness. See, many of us don't want to deal with the realness of God. We just want to talk about God is love. Yes, he is. God is peace. Yes, he is. But God is wrath. Nobody ever wants to deal with the other side. Can I take two minutes and deal with the other side of God? The other side of God that opened up the ground and swallowed up thousands of people because they would not obey him. The other side of God that when his wrath gets kindled, the Bible says, who in the world can stand against him? When God gets upset, what are you going to do to stop him? Who can you go petition to? Who can you say, God, stop this 
this from happening? Oh, Jesus have mercy. Who is it that you can go to? The other side of God is the side that can't stand sin. Oh, Jesus. The other side of God is a side where disobedience is just makes him vomit. And when he gets upset, there's nothing that can stop him. David couldn't do anything about what happened. So what he did, Sister Barty, he sent it to the side. Then he gets the word back that where he put it is being blessed. Now, now let me just interject this for somebody. Wherever your anointing is, somebody is enjoying your blessing. Somebody better hear me. There is somebody, Brother Dwayne, somewhere. It might be your boss. Can I just get plain? Your boss goes out and plays golf every Friday while you're sweaty. Where did you put your anointing? Somebody else is enjoying it. The house of Obedidum was enjoying David's blessing. Everything that was connected to his house was getting... Now, can you imagine Obedidum? Man, this is tight. <laughs> Whatever is in that box, keep it right here. My cattle is being blessed. My children are being blessed. Man, the table is spread. My goodness. Man, David... That's what a lot of people's telling the church. Oh, God Almighty. Help me, Holy Ghost. A lot of folks is telling the church, and them folks don't got no power. They claim one thing, but they do something else. They claim that they're walking with God, but they do something else. So what happens is, now I believe, Pastor, that the world is enjoying what belongs to us. And they don't have no business with it. There's no reason. Oh, Jesus, can I just get material just for one minute, Mama T? There's no reason why you and Pastor shouldn't be driving up here in anything you want to drive in. Give me one minute to get material, Pastor. Just one. There ain't no reason. Why is there a reason why they can't drive up here whatever they want? Why they shouldn't be living off the lake somewhere, back, back off the lake somewhere, the boat launch and everything. You don't have to pull your boat nowhere. You guys go out in the backyard and both sit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get no amens in here, Pastor. Well, you don't gotta drag it to no boat line. You can walk out your backyard and you both sit right there. Mama and Pastor D right across the side. <laughs> Come on, this is the reality. Somebody is enjoying your blessing. Somebody that's not even saved is running around with, with, with jet skis and boats and all kind of three-story home and ain't even saved, ain't even believing in God. But we're sitting here, Brother LJ, we're believing God and we're trusting God and we're paying our tithes and we're paying our offering and the devil is alive. He thinks I'm going to run around broke like a joke. I got to preach some faith in here. I gotta preach some faith in here, Mama T. I can feel, I can feel. Some of y'all are still looking at me like, I just like being like this. Well, continue to live the way that you live. Because as long, Jesus have mercy, as long as I got the promises of God in my hand, I believe what this word says. I believe what it says. Just like you said, Brother Dwayne, sit down, give me five minutes, I'll get out your way. Y'all y'all bored with me this morning. I, get, I believe what you said, Brother Dwayne. When you said, when you saw your wife receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you realized, wait a minute, if she's speaking in tongues, that means everything else in this Bible is real. Everything. See, we, we compartmentalize, we put things in compartments, Sister Iman. We believe God for salvation, but we won't believe that God can bless us exceedingly abundantly above all. You can ask for even fit. We believe God for the Holy 